last week I had a job for a 2012 Volkswagen Golf where all the keys were lost. Uh, I get to the job and uh, I go ahead and I pull the cluster. Uh, this is a neck cluster with a you know, 24C64 in it. And um, I read the EEPROM, I put it in the service mode. Uh, put the cluster back. I write the EEPROM back and I access the immobilizer. And you know, I make the dealer key that way, program it. And uh, the key was programming, it was locking, the ID was getting stored, you know, updating the immobilizer information. So all of that was good, but it wouldn't start. So it would crank up, run for a second, and cut off. Uh, pulling codes, I uh, saw in the engine controller that it still was immobilized. And um, it was having like communication errors with the immobilizer system. And also a weird thing was I couldn't access the key information. It would just time out and say so not available. Uh, there's no other warning on the dash. Everything looked good. Like there was, you know, no key not in range type messages. So what I tried to do then was I tried to reprogram the key you know, in the ignition, um, since it was the dealer key, and still nothing. Like, it would program, but that was it. It still wouldn't. So I got to looking at the uh, EEPROM files. Uh, so this one is the service mode EEPROM, and I had the original, um, this one. I had the original EEPROM as well. And... I quickly realized that there was no difference between the two. So my original backup was the exact same as the service mode, which means that um, something is not right. I believe it's, is it this spot? No, like 14, I think. Anyway, um, so at this point, I called the customer and I asked him if somebody had been out there before me. And of course, it turns out there had been someone who tried to do it and was unable to program the key. So I'm guessing what happened is that technician, you know, read the EEPROM, put it in service mode, and then never wrote the original EEPROM back. Uh, so I was left with the service mode EEPROM that they left with. Uh, unfortunately, the customer was unable to get uh, any kind of help from that technician. Uh, they obviously didn't have a backup or anything like that at the file. So. Uh, I kind of got stuck with having to get another cluster. Um, I, I don't know of a way to recover the information that gets cut out and you put them in the service mode. I'm not real sure what it is. I'm guessing it's some kind of, you know, um, you know, crypto code or whatever for, you know, helping the flash decode the key palm or something. I'm not real sure, but without it, it's, it's not going to function. Um, so I went ahead and I got the replacement that finally came in today. And we're going to try to uh, port over the immobilizer data from this one into this one. So let's see how that goes. And hopefully then I you know that one will be plug and play. But, uh, all right, so I'm here at the Gulf, and I have two instrument clusters to try. I have the original one, which I'm going to put in first. And the original one, I actually uh, modified the dump. Uh, it's kind of weird how i done it. I might add that to the video, but basically, I kind of used the other dump to uh, program it like to go into the immobilizer mode and I was able to get the like a new code that was missing so just you know like four or five different copies of the original file mixed with trying to program the donor um, I'm hoping that maybe this one will just work with my uh, my repair attempt in the EEPROM and then uh, then I have that donor there that if this don't work, I'll try to adapt that. 
Now, I don't have a uh, lot of good video about how I fixed this original cluster, but I did want to go over a little bit about how I did it. And um, it was a mixture of learning what was going on from working with the donor cluster that showed me what I was able to do to fix the original cluster. So as I was working on the donor cluster, um, these are a bunch of the files here from uh, where I was working on it. And uh, see, I used I used VVDI um, to get this done, but basically as I was making a key for the donor cluster, because uh, you know to program it, I'd have to have a key, and just doing the normal process of programming the key for that I noticed that um, when I put it in the service mode, okay, so the original cluster, the original problem with the original cluster is I'm going to show you right here. Okay, so right now this file that you see is for the donor cluster, but on the original, you see this string here, this red? This string was missing in the original one. Um, so this top one is the donor original file. The bottom part is the donor, how you put it in the service mode. And that's where I said, you know, the person before forgot to write this data back. Um, but during the process of making the key for this donor, you know, I put it in service mode and I wrote it back. And after I wrote it, uh, being nosy, I, I ended up saving it again. I ended up pulling the chip back off, reading it again, and saving the new data. And I started noticing that this string actually changes it doesn't stay the same so like when you used uh, VVDI and you have put it in service mode before you do anything you know you write the EEPROM back the original EEPROM back and then you can read your immobilizer data make your key do you know whatever you need to do then but like I said this string changed when it wrote the EEPROM back for whatever reason, this string was different now. So I was thinking, well, it, if that changes, then it, you know, it can't be that bad that it's lost. So I ended up playing with the original, and um, I just kept making, like, I took the string from the donor, even though it was completely different. Well, you know what? Actually, that's not true. Uh, first, I took and inserted the immobilizer data from the original into the donut and then I used that same string to write a new one and it didn't come out right like it was really weird looking I don't know if I can find the files but um, it was just really weird it didn't really match up right I'm not sure which one this is and I didn't like it but I kept doing it I kept reading put it in the service mode and kept writing with the immobilizer data and I finally got a clean string let me see the final one so somehow I finally got it to give a clean string like um, before I got this clean string it would have like uh, blank spots in here like it would be a bunch of F's, it would be like halfway filled and then some F's that didn't get filled. Um, so I didn't think that was going to be good, so I kept messing with it and I finally got this complete string. And once I got this complete string, I, you know, made sure the key was programmed, I checked everything and it, it, did, it worked perfect. There's no codes or nothing. And uh, this is the file I ended up putting back on the original right before I, um, you know, cloned it. Uh, I'm sorry, right before I adapted it. And uh, I never got to use the donor. Uh, the donor, since I had repaired the original, I actually, I did not keep the donor with the original immobilizer data. I actually, I put its normal immobilizer data back onto it and made keys to it because I wanted something completely different in case my original one failed. I wanted the donor to be as original as it was, you know, in case whatever I was doing with the car's original cluster didn't work. I wanted something completely different. Um, but luckily I didn't need that. But I, it's, it's, it was really confusing. But what I done, basically, 
just, I kept saying that I was putting it in service mode, and then I kept writing the EEPROM back with the proper immobilizer data there. And somehow that was able to get me a repaired string there. And uh, yeah, I mean, probably not explaining it well. And if you don't know what you're doing already, you probably won't understand anything I said, but it, it you know, it does work like that. So. All right, so I have a chip here. This chip is already programmed. It's already programmed for this cluster. So let's see what happens. Mobilizer active. Okay, so the immobilizer is active, but let's uh, check our scanner now. Okay. So I have BCBS hooked up. Let's open that and see how it goes. I'm going to pause this for a second. All right, so I've got the auto scan run. I want to go into uh, a mobilizer now and see what the codes are. So right now it looks like just the uh, engine controller. Don't know what this is. Let's just clear everything. See uh, if anything comes back. see uh, engine controller well that one says okay let me see what this one says uh, so this is a lot of this is from me having it unhooked on the bus so let's close that close controller go back okay so what I'm going to try to do now is I'm actually I'm gonna try to run uh, BBDI 2 and maybe try to program the key to see if the uh, ECU will take it all right, so I have uh, I have the immobilizer data read, and I'm going to do this learn key method here, and we're going to see if we can just program the key and if that will take care of it. So I do see one one on the dash, which means that it did program the key into the cluster again. Now let's see if the ECU will accept it. Nope. Um, so now I'm going to try to adapt it with PCDS. Uh, you may can adapt it with BBDI, but I can't remember the process. And the uh, Rostec, they have a nice, nice uh, walkthrough to do them. Uh, but uh, so far, the original is not... Not plug and play, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully I can still make it work. Okay, so I have the original cluster with the modified dump that I put in there, and I've gone into VVDI2 into the adapt unit module. I've entered in the CS and the pin that I have. And it says it read everything successfully and it come back with this. I'm actually going to try to write this now. But let's just follow what it says and see what happens. So uh, whatever it did, it says it's completed. Um, let's go and check and see if everything's working in the car. So I do not see a mobilizer active message on the dash here. Let's turn the key off, and let's turn the key back on. And you know what? I think we have finally gotten it. All right, so the final result is I had the original cluster um, where I repaired the EEPROM inside of it, got a new key programmed. Lock on lock. Okay, I'm going to put the key in. No more engine immobilized code. Let's go ahead and crank it. 
and we see the engine cranked up, it's running, no lights on the dash. Um, I did have to code the ABS and uh, all the stuff that goes with the ABS, but uh, you know, I did that with the uh, Autel Dime, Dime 608 and the uh, online coding, and everything's good. Job's all done. Um, I did have to basically replace the cluster. I used the original cluster, but all the data on there was different. And then I ended up using the old mobilizer data to edit into the, you know, the newer data. I kind of mixed them together until I had a working unit that was, uh, you know, programmed with the key, but it was still not given authorization to the ECU. So what I did after that was I had to use the VBDI2. And in the ECU functions, there's an adaption to adapt a uh, used ECU. And I basically pretended that the ECU was different. So I entered in the CS data, the original CS data, which was the original CS data anyway, because I was using the old immobilizer data. So I entered that in. I entered in my original pin, which I had made the, you know, the current pin. And, um... I wrote it, you know, I read it with that, and then I wrote it. I wrote the exact same data back, and whatever VVDI did, it it did it. It fixed whatever the engine controller was missing to make it function. Uh, after that process, uh, you know, I just had to do the ABS and stuff like that and the remote. So um, that's it.